Hey, what's up, Lee Ron here, and if you ever tried perspective drawing, you probably know that one of the most complex things to achieve is drawing circles and ovals in perspective accurately. So today we're gonna, I'm gonna use this really cool trick of having just two real squares and a circle trapped within one of them to show you how to draw circles in perspective, how to measure them and draw them accurately. And I'm also gonna correct this small mistake I made in a sketch I showed you a few weeks back um, and show you how to fix these kinds of mistakes. So let's take it to the table and get started. So before I'm showing you the actual technique on paper, I want to show you this with a real piece of paper because it'll make more sense and will be very easy to understand. So if you look at this, this is a square. It's not a perfect square, but it's kind of okay. Now, when you look at it head on, uh, it is a square, but what happens is when we move it around, you see what happens, I, I turn it around, this edge here, the one that's farther back, this part is farther from us than this part. And what this leads to is this part being a little, appearing to be a little smaller. Let me show you, okay? When you look at it like that, you see how the front upper part is a little larger than the back part? Now, this effect gets more extreme the closer we are to the object. So if the object is farther from the camera or our point of view for that matter, when I rotate it, there isn't that big of a difference, right? But as I bring it closer and closer and closer, you see how the effect, and sorry that it's out of focus, it's gonna work itself out in a moment, I hope, and if not, it's not a big deal, but you see how it gets more extreme, the difference? The reason for that is that the delta between our point of view and this edge, and our point of view and this edge, gets more significant the closer the object is to us, okay? So right now, the difference between this, the distance to here and to here, is a little more significant, okay? So this is how perspective works. Now let me throw you a curveball. What happens if we trap within this square a circle, okay? So this is what I wanna show you in this video. How do you get the circle to look accurate in different perspectives, okay? Uh, and we'll do that using a square, constraining it within a square. So let me get my sketchbook, I'm gonna show you how it's done. So now it's time to actually draw what I just showed you. Um, first things first, again, if we have uh, a square, okay, something like this, then that's fine, we look at it head on. But as we rotate it, remember what happens, the edge that's farther from us appears to be shorter, okay? It appears to be shorter. It's not really shorter. Now, what happens if we constrain a uh, circle within that square? So how do you constrain a circle within a square? The circle actually touches the center of all sides of the square. So if we were to mark the centers, and you can eyeball it, it doesn't have to be fully accurate, and then we would constrain a circle within that, and I'm gonna try and be as accurate as I can. So you get something like this, okay? Now, here, it's gonna be a little different. You can also kind of wing it, so I'm gonna try winging it, you see? And I get it within this trapezoid shape, but there is a better way to measure and to do it more accurately. So let me show you. Let's say we have, again, this is one point perspective. These lines, all lines that are parallel, converge to a vanishing point in the distance. So let's put another one like this, okay? So here are perspective lines, and here is our Square or rectangle, okay? I may not be as accurate and it may be a rectangle, but that's fine, it doesn't really matter. So, how do we find the centers where the circle touches? Very simple. First, you have to connect these two corners and these two corners, okay? Now, what we get here essentially is the middle point, the dead center of the square and the circle. So from here, what we do is we drop another perspective line from that same vanishing point and we got the centers for these two lines, okay? Now, how do we find the centers for these two lines? We drop, again, a line through this point. This time, these lines are pretty much uh, parallel, so we'll drop another parallel line here, and we got the centers. So we got one, two, three, four. If we wanna draw a circle here, it has to touch all of these points to be accurate, okay? or an oval, it could also be an oval because uh, it may be a rectangle, okay? But, and do it slowly, okay? Try, ghost it, just do the movement and then place in the line. Obviously, I'm nowhere near perfect, but you get the idea. And you can apply this to any um, 
perspective and different variation of it. So if we rotate it, for example, to the right and try something a little uh, different, same thing will happen. So let's go with something as crazy as this. Let's even go for a two-point perspective. So what happens here, we have two sets of parallel lines. One is this, and this is fairly obvious, converges to this vanishing point, but these two lines, if you notice, are not perfectly parallel as well. They will meet somewhere there, okay? Now, why does this happen? Because I have this piece of paper, and what happens is I tilt it both here and here. Okay, so this side is farther from this side, but this side is also farther from us from this side. So a very extreme example of it will look like this. Okay, so how do we go about this? Again, even if you don't know perspective, you don't know anything, you just do the same thing. You connect the corners like so, put this here, middle, middle point, connect it to the perspective. Now, if you don't know how to work with perspective, think of it as a fan. You see how these lines fan out? All you have to do is this, find the center point of this fanning action. So even if you don't know what this is, you don't know what a vanishing point is, just try and find the middle between them. So you go like this is the fan and the middle is here, crossing through this point, right? As I mentioned, the meeting point of the corners. Same thing goes for this. It's so mild of a, of a perspective, it's barely there's barely any difference between the two. Just find a line that feels, quote unquote, parallel to these two. So we'll drop something like this right through here. Okay, now if we want to get a circle in this perspective, all we have to do is touch all of these edges. So go sit a bit and then slowly apply pressure and try to get it as accurate as you can. Okay, so I got it somewhat accurate. Now I want to show you one small thing as I made a mistake in one of my last sketches. Let me bring it to you. So if you remember, I showed you this car sketch. Now this tire, this is okay, but this one is not fully in perspective correctly. So let me show you how you'd get that in perspective, okay? What you want to do is, let me zoom out a bit. So what you want to do is find the perspective of the scene itself, okay? So and let me place this here. So we have the perspective coming from here, right? So we get this and this and this and this. And within that, you want to constrain the circle. And that's how you get it accurate. You do the same thing, connect the corners, drop this line, drop this line, and then drop a, a circle within that. And that's how you get it to be accurate. Now you have to remember one more thing. This is a little complex, I will touch upon it in a different video. The other tire is somewhere around here, right? So the long axis of this oval needs to be perpendicular to the line connecting the two uh, circles, the two tires, okay? So basically we have this line, okay? So let me move this. We have this kind of a line connecting the two tires. Why? Because this is the long axis that moves through them, okay? Imagine there's a center point on this tire and that tire. If we connect them, we get the long, what's called the long axis, so we get this. The part that's perpendicular to that is going to be the long axis of the oval that's, that's the actual uh, circle. So essentially it's gonna look something like this, okay? So it's another way of looking at it. This is more complex. You're not supposed to fully understand it from this explanation. I will make another video. Let me know if you want me to touch upon this one or anything that has to do with three-dimensional shapes, measuring, and perspective. I do plan on doing more videos on this. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Let's wrap it up face to face. So thank you so much once again for watching. I hope this trick helps you. And as I mentioned, let me know if you want me to cover any other topics that have to do with 3D and stuff like that. I do plan on doing a, really soon a sketchbook tour of my anatomy sketchbook just to show you how much work goes into figuring out the human body and how big of a role perspective plays in that, okay? So I really hope you enjoyed this one. If you wanna check out my courses, either the drawing course or watercolor course, everything can be found in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next vid.